Okay. Let us begin now, Metta. <coughs> May all beings be happy and secure. May, may all, all beings, beings have happy minds. minds. Whatever, Whatever living beings there, there may be, without, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere. Neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so, towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hate or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or whenever awake. One should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely living here not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desires for sanctuary pleasures, one comes the way again to birth in the womb. <coughs> Let us continue our metta meditation practice. And uh, our mindfulness practice. <coughs> We focus our mind, as usual, on our breathing to notice the breath flowing in and out, paying total attention to see what happens to us when we breathe. As we breathe in, breath touches our nostrils reaches our lungs, expanding lungs, and then expanding lower abdominal area. As we breathe out, lower abdomen contracts, chest area contracts, the breath leaves our nostrils. This is what is happening all the time. The breath moves in and out. Don't try to control it, manipulate it, verbalize it or anything, but we just breathe natural breath, letting it flow in and out. Then we notice the feeling along with the breath, perceptions, Thoughts and consciousness also flow along with the breath. All these five, in short, are called five aggregates. The breath is body, then the feeling, feeling aggregate, perception aggregate, thoughts of volitional formations aggregate, and consciousness aggregates. These five aggregates also moves, rise and fall, in and out, rise and fall, rise and fall, all the time. And then when we see this very normal, natural rhythm, there is nothing to excite nothing to hold on to, everything arising and vanishing, then the desire for any holding will also vanish. Then the body is relaxed. When we try to hold on to something, we are rigid, uptight, and uh, very uncomfortable. When that is gone, 
body relaxes, mind relaxes, breath relaxes. In the relaxed state of mind, we feel metta feeling and resentment fades away. When this happens, along with this, with metta feeling, compassionate feeling also arises and restlessness and worry fades away. When restlessness and worry fades away, we become even more energetic seeing the results of our own practice. We feel like continuing and pursuing this method. And then energy arises, sleepiness and drowsiness fade away. When does greed, resentment, restlessness and worry and sleepiness and drowsiness fade away, we will gain confidence in our practice, in the method, in the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. We gain confidence. When we gain confidence, doubt fades away. When this happens, we become very delightful. Joy arises. Joy leads to tranquility. And joy leads to happiness. Happiness leads to tranquility. When the mind and body are tranquil, concentration arises in a very calm state of mind. When concentration arises, first we saw rising and falling and so forth. When concentration arises, this rising and falling, we say more deeply, more clearly, where we find this rising and falling, again in the same five aggregates. Nothing else to rise and fall. Only the body, feeling, perceptions, volitional formations and consciousness are the things that have rising and falling. They are rising and falling. We first see them in a gross form, then when we gain degree of concentration, that concentrated mind can penetrate the grossness to the subtleness and see subtle changes in our body, almost like in our cellular level. That means we only notice vibration like electric flashes, electric light moving up and down in various ways and that shows more clearly that things are always in a state of flux, moving, 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 rising, falling, rising, falling. So let us try to see this.
May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. So too may all beings be. With this metta thought in mind, let us continue our practice. Can they see it? Yeah. Now, our new resident. Uh, today, you see on the screen a new friend came to our property. We don't know from where, and he follows us. Imu? Imu. Imu. Uh, we want to send this man and we have a link to listen to them. Sure. Okay, friends, today we want to continue our uh, Dhamma talk. Uh, sorry to interrupt it with uh, Imu. Uh, Imu. Uh, we are on the uh, nine uh, channel ground contemplation. Last time we started the, with the number one, that is uh, when someone passes away after one, two, three days dead, bloated, livid, oozy matters, and um, meditation, med meditating bhikkhu will uh, see, will uh, imagine or visualize because uh, this is not a very common scene. Therefore, he has to visualize the sit this situation and uh, Complete, contemplate and reflect that uh, this so-called my body, so-called I, would be very much like this, exactly like this, not go on beyond that. This way, his uh, attachment to the body will slowly fade away. Friends, we meditate to get rid of our desire, our clinging to the five aggregates. When you see these pictures or imagine this kind of uh, situation, it is very scary and some people feel very uh, frightened and they even don't want to think of it uh, because they are so emotional. So long as we are emotional, we will not see the truth. We go to be, we go to be more uh, practical, realistic, to understand the nature of our life, how fragile it is, how impermanent it is. What we are going to say today is the next step of this uh, cemetery uh, or nine, nine stages of body after death. 
Yeah, today is number two. Buddha says again, as though he were to see a composed a corpse thrown aside in a charnel ground, being devoured by crows, hawks, vultures, dogs, jackals, or various kind of worms. Now, if you are emotional, when we say the body is devoured, attacked by crows, you feel the pain. <laughs> you, you, you imagine that the crow attacked you. You feel you cannot do this meditation. You have to be, you have to be more practical and realistic that this exactly what can happen to any body after death, not only one person, even to myself. I am not exempt from this. When the crow pecked on this corpse, this cadaver, dead body, the dead body doesn't feel anything because it is dead, like a log. So, if we <coughs> were to think of any preciousness of this body after death, you cannot practice this meditation. We have to understand the nature of this body when it's feeling, perceptions, thoughts and consciousness left this body. Feeling, perception, thought, consciousness, all make this body exist. When all this depart from this body, it is just four elements, as we discussed earlier. So, whether the body is devoured or, you know, the uh, peg on the body, and uh, pull pieces of meat uh, by all these animals, jackals. You might have seen this happening in uh, pictures, in safaris, in various type of uh, animals, eating other animals, you know, pulling their flesh and uh, eating. So after that, this happens to any being that has flesh in the body. So, that means all we are attached to this body now, when our feeling, perception, thought and consciousness leave the body, this body we can burn, bury and let animal eat. We, normally we don't do that by these days, but uh, if the body is left in a charnel ground, left open and unattended, no one is around, in a forest, in somewhere, this can happen. So, when it happens, we cannot claim, ah, he sit in my body. He's dragging, uh, pulling the flesh from my body. So I, my, is no longer there. So this meditator, before death, before this sort of things happens, these sort of things are 
I am not uh, gone beyond this. This sort of thing can happen to this body. So before death, this meditator contemplate, pay attention, be mindful of what will happen to the body after death. So his uh, ignorance, his emotions, his clinging, craving will slowly fade away, but he sees the very nature of this body, this existence. And for this then he will no longer be attached to it, no hate it, no confused about it. He just sees the body exactly as it is, something rising, falling, rising, falling, rising, falling, while he is alive as well as when he is dead, while the bodily bacteria are functioning as they used to when the body was alive, the bacteria continues to uh, eat the body. While we are alive, the bacteria, uh, some bacteria uh, eats us up. And when we die, they continue to eat this body. While this is happening, other living beings also pull pieces of meat from this body. So that is what one has to contemplate and think. So the person will no longer be very proud of it and will not be attached to it, will not be uh, having hatred uh, towards this body or towards anybody and he simply sees the very nature of life and after death. Okay, that is the second contemplation. Third is uh, uh, again, as though he were to see a corpse thrown aside in a charnel ground, uh, a skeleton with flesh and blood held together with sinews. Now, after eating this, eaten by these animals, flesh is <coughs> gone, but uh, it is. Uh, skeleton with flesh. Some flesh are here and they are on bones. And they are, uh, the blood also is there, some blood, some flesh. But all of them are held by sinews, tangents. <coughs> uh, they are not separated. And then the skeleton uh, he can imagine uh, of his own body after death. Then the fourth stage is as though he were to see a corpse thrown in the, at the uh, uh, channel ground. <coughs> Fleshless skeleton is made with blood, held with sinews. Before he saw the skeleton with flesh and blood. Now he sees the skeleton without flesh but smeared with blood. And again sinewed, you know, tied together or dis not uh, disconnected but connected with the sinew and tendons. And then he goes to the fifth stage if you read the book, if you see the discourse, you can see this uh, nine yourself, and I'm just uh, reading it from the book uh, in English. We, I, I skip uh, Pali in order to save time. So the fifth stage is uh, also 
in the eternal ground, scattered with our flesh and blood, held together with sinews. Then the meditator contemplates on that. Then the sixth stage is, now there is no flesh, no blood, no sinews or tendons to hold or hold the skeleton together. Therefore, the bones are here and there, scattered. The, the list is given here. Here a hand bone, there a foot bone, here a shin bone, there a thigh bone, here a hip bone, there a back bone, here rib bone, there breast bone, here arms bone, there shoulder bone, here neck bone, there jaw bone, here tooth, there skull, meaning that they are scattered here and there. All the bones are separated from their joints, from their sinews. Now only the bones are here and there. Now slowly and gradually the, the body disintegrating. Now first it was bloated and after two, three days and started matter oozing. And then uh, uh, animals, e eating animals, and then uh, with flesh, then with flesh with sinews, and without flesh uh, with held by sinews, and then sinews also separated, and only the bones. And then he thinks this will happen to this my body so-called my body, it also will be, it is not gone beyond this. So the seven stages, he thinks the bones are here and there after some years, the, on the charnel ground, the bones bleached white, color of shells, That means all its flesh, blood, all gone, it turns into very clear white bone, its original uh, appearance. Number eight, uh, now he is uh, bones heat up more than a year old. Now this bone, just everything is gone, the bone is just one heap bones. Then the ninth stage is uh, this bone slowly, slowly rot, rot and crumbled to dust. And the all he found eventually is that dust. Then one day, when wind blows, this dust also will be blown by the wind. And where is the person? If we burn it, you can see it happening immediately, but this is happening gradually, step by step. So he contemplated, this is the nature of this body, and it, I'm not going beyond this. So he says, at the end of each section, he repeat this paragraph. What is that? Iti ajyattang kaya kaya nupasi verati 
Vahidhava Kaya Kaya Nupasi Virati. That means, thus he sees the body in the body. Previously he saw the body in the body in a different way. That is, uh, as the breath, then as a posture, then mind posture, then 32 parts and four elements. Now the, at the sixth stage he saw all these have gone. No more posture, no more minor posture, no more breathing, no more uh, uh, contemplation of the 32 parts. 32 parts also are gone and then uh, four elements, but only four elements remain until it, the body, reduces to dust. Until the body reduces to dust, when the body reduces to dust, its water element would completely be gone, no more even water element. So, until then, all these all, all uh, remain in that person is four elements. Now, the meditating bhikkhu, meditating person, practicing mindfulness, in his mind, he first imagined the body, then he imagine the step stages of its aging, growing, falling sick, dying, and then what will happen after death. So, through stages, this will happen. Now, the meditator, all the way, sees impermanence, rising, falling, rising, falling, rising, falling, rising, falling, until it turns it to dust, because even when there is a little bit of flesh, sinews and so forth, rising, falling is taking place because there are bacteria uh, eating and uh, bacteria uh, f producing and uh, disappearing and so forth, he will see all these things. Then he's, he compared his body, this is what will happen to this so-called my body. My perception, my thought, my active, my consciousness, will all this will happen to the same body feeling and so forth that I claim to be myself. And in this way, when we contemplate Ityajatangva Kaya Kaya Nupasivriti, so he contemplate his body like this and he also contemplates other bodies, whatever body the body one likes, body one hates, body one neither hate nor life, love, whatever body is in the world, any type of body is like this, no body is gone beyond this. They all, this happened to all of them including myself, including this body, this happened to all body. Iti ajyattanga kaya kaya vaidhava kaya kaya One's own body and the body of others. There is no partiality. He does not think that it happens to other bodies, not to this body. He puts all the bodies into one melting pot, 
he puts all the body into one and see the universal nature of all bodies and he contemplate nobody is gone beyond this nature this truth what the meditator all alone we were telling we were talking about what the meditator is supposed to do is to see the truth as it is if you are emotional if you are pessimistic if you are biased you cannot understand this nature this truth the truth does not have bias truth does not have prejudice truth does not have emotion truth is just as it is we are talking about seeing things as they really are this is how things as they really are in this body ajanta bahirdhava kayak he contemplate in one's oneself and think of others and compare both ajanta bahir and then samudaya dhamma anupasiva kasmi virati he understand the arising nature of this body passing away of this body <clears throat> body is rising as long as we feed that with four kind of food that's called ahar samudaya rupa samudayo this form existed as long as it was fed by four types of food material food contact thought and consciousness so we have been feeding our body with these four kind of food and therefore body existed now slowly and gradually we become uh, uh, so d- uninterested in food we dislike food there is no fla- no appetite no uh, feel feel there's no feeling for eating so then material food subside and slowly 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 body eats up its own fat then contact eyes ears nose tongue body do not feel like contacting anything eyes does not have desire to contact form ears don't have desire to contact sound similarly nose tongue and body even the mind does not want to contact their respective objects lose interest in them it's so fading away then uh, our last is no interest in anything in the world of course uh, uh, we may have a desire to relive that will no law that will not be completely wiped out disappeared but that is the only thing we have and when we pass away this desire is uh, bringing another form because the desire cling to something desire snatch is to cling to something so at the moment of death this power of clinging of desire will reproduce another state of existence depending on our karma other than that everything will cease so the meditator 
sees this nature happening universally, including himself, everything is in this subject to this nature, arising, passing. So the meditator will, will have no uh, greed, hatred or delusion with regard to this this situation, he did not. He does not hate what happens to the body after death. He does not cling to the body after death. He does not. He is not ignorant or unaware or confused about what happened to the body after death, because before death he already has the total picture in his mind and he lives his life with this understanding to reduce and overcome his greed, hatred and delusion. With these friends, I want to conclude this morning talk and we can start tomorrow or next day, day after tomorrow, with the uh, the contemplation or mindfulness of the feelings. Second foundations of mindfulness. Now today, thus end the first foundation of mindfulness called Kaya Gata Sati or mindfulness of the body. With this I want to end. <coughs> and I want to wish again uh, our metta wish uh, may all those who are in a painful suffering state uh, I think uh, suffering the people from this COVID-19 is increasing in, in here in the United States and in some other countries. But the death is... Uh, today I saw 200,818 just a few minutes ago, death. And I'm pretty sure they are living relatives and friends are mourning their death, grieving over their death. May they be free from that grief through the understanding of Dhamma. And uh, we also wish them be safe, not having contacted with the virus and live in good health and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. There are some others who are living in hospitals taken care of by very compassionate doctors and nurses and uh, hospital staff. May they also be free from that sickness and get returned to normal health. Those compassionate doctors, nurses, and hospital staffs also continue their noble, compassionate service without affected by this COVID-19. Let them live a healthy life to serve the world in the way they do. There are many leaders who have done a lot of good works and uh, successfully some some of them and may they continue their marvelous work. Other leaders who have uh, not yet uh, found a uh, way, may they have uh, patience, courage, understanding and compassion to make wise decision. With this uh, wish I want to end this morning session. <coughs>
Thank you, Bante. Thank you, Bante. Thank you, Bante. Thank you, Bante. Thank you very much, Bante. Thank you very much, Bante. Thank you, Bante. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Bante. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Hi there. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome. Take care, everyone. Big bird. <laughs> our new friend he came to came to our property. We don't know from where. Mm -hmm. And he begins to follow me when I walk. <laughs> and yes, they posted I took this picture with my cell phone. <laughs> this Bande Zilan and the walking from that place. On this side. And he posed for the picture. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Bye everyone. Right. See you tomorrow. Bye.